Welcome back, Dark Souls fans, to Let's Die Horribly in Dark Souls 3. I remain your host, Shadow Theory 333 and normally I would do a boss fight death montage, but I just thought, you know, maybe there's something here, because Aldrich is probably Gwendolyn, and normally Gwendolyn was here, and you'd have a big old boss fight, and that was it. But it looks like there's nothing here. But I feel like I should probably do this before dealing with Aldrich completely. Because I feel like there's going to be something special if I do that in that order. Anyway, so what I wanted to do as well, also because I just found brass stuff, which is probably... <sighs> Lautrec stuff. The Fina armor. Armor of a knight once known as the Dark Moon. It is said that the brass armor hides something hideous within. Something about its silhouette suggests femininity. Never mind, this is the old Firekeeper. This is the Firekeeper I was talking about briefly last episode where I was kind of pointing out old areas. Yeah, she's the Firekeeper of Anna Londo, or that was, that corpse is clearly the corpse of the Firekeeper of Anna, or the former Firekeeper of Anna Orlando. It's like the dark, it's like Aldrich came in, killed everybody, which kind of makes sense, Devourer of the Gods and all that, but also came in and essentially, well, how do I want to put this? It's like Aldrich came in and just got their cult or whatever to wreck up the place, but then still act like it's normal. That's how I feel. Also, if you're wondering why all the messages are... Actually, there is treasure ahead from the looks of it. This is pretty much... So what happened in the original is that you'd fight... Gwendolyn along this hall here. The hall would become infinitely long. Well, not quite, but it was effectively... That was the idea. And then afterwards you'd end up here, which is Gwyn's tomb. Although Gwyn wasn't dead, but that was the idea. This is the tomb of the, essentially, sun god of the universe. And that's... Also, the fact that the sun god has a tomb should probably tell you all you need to know about the Dark Souls universe. In case 46 episodes in, you haven't realized how this whole thing works. Anyhow... That side, actually 47 at this point. No. It is 46. This is number 46. Anyhow, yeah, so with... Normally what happened is you'd have a bunch of chests, and I think you'd have to pick one. This looks normal. Reversal ring. I wonder what that does. But yeah, so that was a thing. Males can perform female actions and vice versa. A divine ring granted to the Dark Moon Gwendolyn in his youth. Cause males to perform female actions and vice versa. Gwendolyn was raised like a daughter through the aura of the moon and was said to behave like a sullen brooding goddess. What the hell does that mean? Males can perform female actions. I... I don't know. I don't understand. That can't just be flavor, but I don't get it. I haven't found anything that's been sex-specific so far. Maybe I missed it? I think I recall there being something mentioned about... Like, I could probably still wear the Evangelist armor no matter what, so... That doesn't make a difference. Yeah, I can. If I really wanted to. I don't, but if I wanted to, I could. Was there a miracle I couldn't cast if I was... A man? I don't think so. Well, I'll have to explore that later. Interesting flavor, and we and anyone who hasn't played Dark Souls 1 has a bit more of an idea of who Gwendolyn was, and I keep talking about Dark Sun Gwendolyn. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Aldrich. But, yeah, so that's interesting. It's also kind of interesting that that's not the... Bla or if you are supposed to get to the Blaze of the Dark Moon through there, you can't easily. Anyway, back to the boss. <sighs> oh, crap! That turns on me. Okay, well... Assuming Aldrich doesn't have a third stage, I think it's just a matter of 
maybe being a touch more patient. Otherwise, yeah, this boss, I think I get how this boss works. Okay, I got Amber up. I've got Amber up. Oh, their tail got in the way. Oh, come on. Tail. Oh, crap. boss is all about manipulating her attack ranges. Like, it's pretty clear that when you're close up to her, she'll either teleport or... Maybe it's a he, because if it's Gwendolyn, then it's uncertain. But... Like, Aldrich will... Looks like they're either... Okay, done? Yes, done. Okay, so it looks like they either will teleport or they'll go for their swing attack. So as long as you keep your eye on the swing attack, you'll be fine. Alright, so the Lord of Cinder is dead. Aldrich is dead. <sighs> Oh, Aldia, that was the one I was trying to remember. From Garfield 2, that's what it reminds me. And awaits oh. its one last lord. What's Prince happening? Lothric is in your hands. Please save his soul. Was that the woman in the lot? Okay, the High Wall of Lothar Cathedral is probably... Yeah. Right here. Prince Lothric is in your hands. Please save his soul. Tell him what he must be a lord. Ah... <sighs> This is the very last thing 
I have been spoiled on in the entire game. Okay, it's not entirely true. I've also been spoiled on the kind of ending I'm getting probably get. But this is the last, broadly speaking, thing I've been spoiled on in the game. When I put anything in the Basin of Vows, that's when the Dancer of the Boreal Valley comes down and I have another super hard boss fight. So right now, what I'd rather like to do is not do that and instead get rid of both of these knights, likely relatively trivially. Oh, wow. Yeah, no problems there. So yeah, get rid of those two knights. Get to the bonfire. Then I want to do a couple of things. First off, I'm not being shown something. There's something missing. I know there's something missing. And I know there's something missing because I missed out on anything in the boss room that was, well, there, really. So I want to check what's here, for one thing. It's like, alright, thank you game for letting me know when I'm actually going to be dealing with the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. That's rather considerate of you. Wait, are the elevators still running? Holy crap, the elevators are still going. There's Ornstein's elevator and Smo's elevators on the other side, most likely. Yep. Still there, still functional. Not in the best of repair, but it exists. And do we have any armor over here this time around? Nope, no, it looks like that body's gone. And there's a bunch of comments, too. Treasure? Vision's tapping in the back. Yes, everyone's remembering La Trek. Hey, you couldn't walk along this area before. Everyone's remembering Lao Trek because if you killed... Okay, Lao Trek was an NPC that you found early on in Dark Souls 1. And what ended up happening is they went to Firelink Shrine, which is much smaller at the time. And they would kill every... Or they would kill one person. There was actually a Demon Souls character who would kill everybody. But in Dark Souls 1, they'd only kill the Firekeeper. And then you came here. There was a special item you got that lets you take revenge. And then if you did, you'd find their armor over there. I also notice that they've actually fixed the railings. In Dark Souls 1, you could drop down from here, down to the boss area. Though, then again, the bonfire was right here. Rather than down, further down, lower. And, of course, Guinevere's not here. Sun Princess Ring. Visions of Princess. <laughs> yeah, try attacking. Ah, for all time's sake. This is where the illusion of Guinevere was. So, it's clearly time for some story time and some boss, post-boss stuff. First off, story time. There's some rings we found. Or a ring, Sun Princess Ring, to be precise. Where's the... There we go. Ring associated with Guinevere, Princess of Sunlight and eldest daughter of Gwyn, the First Lord. The ring is vaguely warm like a beam of sunlight and gradually restores HP. Guinevere left her home with a great many other deities and became a wife and mother, raising several heavenly children. And, of course, her illusion stayed back here, which you could shoot and darken the entirety of Anor Londo. Spoilers. But, yeah. Caused by Gwendolyn, who I suspect is Aldrich. Even though you... Well, I guess that's the thing, is that you didn't necessarily kill Gwendolyn in Dark Souls 1, so you wouldn't have necessarily killed... Oh, yeah, that's Guinevere. Statue of Guinevere. But yeah, you wouldn't have necessarily killed the, the well, Darkson Gwendolyn, so they might have become Aldrich. There's no saying they didn't, and a lot of hints that they did. Well, I guess the first thing to do would be to look at the soul. There's a few things to look at. Soul of Aldrich. One of the twisted souls seeps in strength. Soul of Aldrich. Used to acquire many souls or transpose. When Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really say one way or the other. Anyhow. 
there was another couple things I got too. I think both are key items. Yeah, they're Cinders of a Lord. Cinders of a Lord left by Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. The Lords will not return to the thrones themselves when they return Cinders. Aldrich became a Lord by devouring men, but was disillusioned with this throne. And so took to devouring gods instead. Okay, so it might not be Gwendolyn. Or it might be like a mix of Gwendolyn and some other entity. I don't know. Basin of Vows. Chalice used in an old ceremony in which Lothric Knights take their vows. It's only a formality now, but it remains as an empty practice. Place this basin at a statue of a beheading knight. And the giant's coal, which I never went over. Coal used weapon infusion. It is said that the giant blacksmith of Anor Londo was once the blacksmith of the gods. Yes, and he was a very kind, if somewhat simple, blacksmith too. Give to the blacksmith in the shrine to allow the use of gems for lightning, simple, and chaos infusion. And my guess is that I give it to, to Andre and he'll say something to the effect of, Oh, I knew that. I knew that man. He was a good man. Or, he was a good man. I can't get my cornal accent right. Let me think for a second. Er, he was a good man. No, I can't quite do it. Er, he was a good blacksmith. No, I got it right. Working my cornal accent. Like, it's just talking like a pirate. Like, Yar, he was a good blacksmith. Except not quite as piratey. Like, er, he was a good blacksmith. I'll miss him. Or something. More York. Ah, anyway, well, we we'll met. Tis good to see ye in good health. What needs smithing this day? I need this coal. Okay, I got the accent now. More or less. Give you the giant's coal. And you'll probably be saddened by it. Because giant's my, dead. My, my. The coal of that peaceable giant. Seems like ages past. I imagine his passing was long ago. I miss the old bugger I do. My thanks. I'll be sure this coal is put to good use. I'll be smithing weapons never afore seen by the likes of ye. It's but a small service to pay my humble respects. <laughs> Yay, I'm not the only one who's mourning the giant blacksmith. Thank you, Andre. Oh yeah, and I can upgrade this too. It's like, yay! And now I get lightning infusion. I have no lightning gems, do I? Really, I don't? No, wait, I, I can. But yeah, just lightning damage. It does scale, though. Okay, so it scales with faith. Right, 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 I checked that. It's Dark Souls 2 lightning. Okay. Which is actually not necessarily terrible. Anyway. That aside. Yeah, at least we're on the same page about the giant blacksmith. Both miss the giant. Both miss the giant blacksmith. All right. I feel like there's a lot of people to talk to because it seems like a lot of stuff has changed. Life hunt scythe steals HP of foes using an illusory scythe. Miracle of Aldrich, devourer of gods, steals HP of foes using an illusory scythe. Aldrich dreamt as he slowly devoured the god of the dark moon. In this dream, he perceived the form of a young, pale girl in hiding. Okay, so Aldrich is not Gwendolyn. Aldrich ate Gwendolyn. I was exactly wrong. Longbow of Darkmoon Gwendolyn, who is gradually devoured by Aldrich. This golden bow is imbued with powerful magic and is most impressive with moonlight arrows. Skill is Darkmoon Arrow, infuse a readied arrow with Darkmoon Essence, granting it magic damage and the ability to pierce shields. I actually have a build idea I've sort of been toying with. Not for this character, obviously, but for a different character. It's kind of an arcane archer idea, which seems kind of redundant to me because most sorceries are just direct range attacks and arrows are just direct range attacks. But something like this feels like it would justify that. Hmm. Anyway. That's the thing. I'm guessing that requires intelligence. Yeah, it requires intelligence. And this, of course, being a miracle requires faith. So, yeah, if I was trying to do that build, it would obviously be dex and int. Maybe some faith? Probably just dex and int. Is that it? Because if that's it, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to probably... Not with great priority, because I don't think Aldrich's soul would give me a huge amount of souls. But I will eventually probably get rid of it. Ah. Okay. Uh, 
I don't care about buying, I care about selling. 1,500, 15,000, really? That's it, wow. Yorm was far more profitable, but I guess maybe the idea is that you're supposed to fight Aldrich first and then go down to the dungeon to fight Yorm, but frankly, getting to the dungeon and fighting Yorm is a lot easier. Oh, and, and in one. Okay, well, as far as I know, I have cleared out Irith, though. What is it? I'm... Mmm, I am great. <laughs> Goodbye. I will leave for some time. Do. <laughs> Don't die. I pretty much cleared out the place, so I doubt you'll have any trouble. Ah, good tidings. I spouse is ready. The time is ripe. To greet him, the boy awaits thee in the hidden dark moon chamber of Anor Longo. So thou mayst a true monarch become. Ah, good to the boy. So thou. All right. Till we may. Well, at least I think the guy's okay. Hang on. He seems an okay chap, so yeah, sure, why not? I don't see... Well, I guess I got everything I needed from the invader guy. Looks like he's still sitting there, though. Now invade and if come on. <laughs> oh yeah, right, and I can't find Rosaria. I'm still assuming there's a back way to the cathedral, and I'm going to find her that way, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh well. Looks like, unless there's something down here, with our little friend from Kareem. Nope. And any miracles you have? Well. Hmm. Okay, so... I'm gonna buy this miracle. I should go over it, so... Story time. Mir deep protection. Miracle taught to inaugurate a deacons of the Cathedral of the Deep. Slightly boosts attack, damage absorption, and resistance while also increasing stamina recovery speed. The Deep was originally a peaceful and sacred place, but became the final rest for many abhorrent things. This tale of the Deep offers protection for those who worship amidst these horrors. That's kind of neat. What does it require, anyway? 20 faith. Not bad. All right, so I got that one because basically I figure that's not a bad idea to have. Just extra stuff in a miracle. Temporary, obviously, but for a boss fight, that could mean the difference between life and death, I suppose. Anyway, let's attune that. And... What is the atonement flavor text? Did I read that? Oh no, I think I actually did read this one. Okay. All right, so leveling up, and then we'll continue. So be back for that. Welcome. All right, we're back on our way to check out Henri, I guess. And it occurs to me. Are the undead fertile? I mean, like, the whole idea of this arranged marriage, and generally with arranged marriages with... Oh, another Londorian. With arranged marriages with royalty was, of course, to have heirs. You Basically, you'd sire a prince or princess, and then they'd continue on the dynasty. But you're talking about immortal undead here. I mean, granted, they do eventually go insane, so I suppose that... Or go hollow, and I suppose that would qualify as no longer being fit to rule. So there's that. But at the same time... If you're determined enough and you don't go hollow, then you basically stay the ruler. So I don't really know how that would work. I feel like the princes and princesses would go hollow waiting for their parents to. Just because they're so frustrated, assuming that the undead curse is hereditary, and assuming the undead can actually have kids. But if they can't have kids, what would be the point? I don't really want to think about having sex with Henri. Anyway, let's continue. Welcome, your please, mate. Thank you. 
All right, what's this? Sort of a vowel. I pick E. That's generally a pretty good vowel. Oh, where? No. There we go. Key items. Ceremonial Sword of Londor cannot be equipped as a weapon. It is said that a rite of wedlock will presage a true hollow lord. Your spouse's name is Anri, who patiently awaits a rightful lord deep in the, mazo in the mausoleum. It's pronounced mausoleum. That's how you say the word. Anyhow, yeah, so, Anri. I don't think anyone's going to draw fan art of Anri and myself shipping. It's just me. Like, the player character's not got any reflections. It's not got any shadows. That's been bugging me this whole time. Yo, Henri, what's up? Uh. What? I guess they still are alive? Oh, I see. Is anyone else getting End of Evangelion flashbacks right now? I know that's a really weird reference to bring up, but... Yeah, that's the first thing that pops in my head, which is really weird and nerdy, and... It's gonna probably get me made fun of, but... Yeah. Granted, they are undead, so that's probably more of a minor inconvenience than anything, but still... Okay. So apparently I'm married to a man with a sword through his head. I feel like the term marriage does not mean what I think it means. And eight dark sigils. Well, okay. I guess that's what I needed to do. I mean, it's... That was weird. I, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I guess I just married him. And of course you're dead because all the pilgrims of Londor just sort of die randomly. Oh, chameleon, the... Turn yourself into object sorcery. Lost sorcery from Ulysseal, land of the ancient golden sorceries. Transform into something inconspicuous. Far from formally developed, this magic was instead born from the mischief of a young girl who sought relief from the solitude of the woods at dusk. So it was probably dusk. The girl in question, I mean. Alright, so we've married slash stabbed someone in the face. I guess that's one way to consummate a marriage. I mean, it's penetrating. I'll slap myself later. That was slightly later. All right, so I guess at this point it's just dealing with the dancer of the Boreal Valley. I'll do cleanup off camera. There's some, there's a couple minor areas I missed, but I don't think it's anything major. Maybe it is. I don't. I doubt it. Although I don't know. With this game, it could be anything. But no matter. That was neat. I feel like I made a lot of progress. So. Back to Vort. And now I have to deal with the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. And yes, the tone is, this is gonna suck. Because 
Pot of Sullivan, as far as I know, has got nothing on this boss, and Pot of Sullivan is a pain in the butt. Basically, this is like Pot of Sullivan, but bigger. And apparently more acidic. I... I believe this is the first boss shown in the first E3 or whatever preview demos for Dark Souls 3. They had this instead of... Vort was later, but initially it was this. For the first previews that people had to fight. As the very first boss they fought. Perhaps some pacing issues were considered. And as a result, the boss was not used as much. Ow. Oh boy. Oh, I knew it was going to hit me. Alright, I feel like I want to take another crack at that one. And then I'm going to call it the episode. One crack. And then that's the episode. Win or lose. Probably lose, but yeah, not not be too pessimistic. Let's actually try. This whole boss is just kind of creepy. There's a really weird vibe to it. Ow. Oh, I should probably pick these up. Especially once it gets both of these swords, it just gets. This is where it gets hard. Okay, I got lucky there. I'm dead. It's doing something, I don't know what it is. Oh, I see. It's. Ah! Powering up the swords. I feel like this boss is actually a lot easier than Ponto Sullivan, but granted, that's only two tries. However, as promised, that was the last one I'm going to do for this episode, so next episode we'll start out with a boss montage, because I have no other plans for exploring much. I mean, there's a couple areas, but I'm not going to do it on camera if I do it at all. So, or do before the next time I fight the dancer. So yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I think we made a lot of progress. And I will see you next time.